Welcome to our special place. The Lord be with you and also with you. It's great to be here once again in our special place at St Mary's Church. And I hope that not before too long we'll all be able to be here together. But to help us with our story today we have our desert bag. I know that everyone likes the desert bag with the sand in it. We, we have to have a piece of, of the desert to help us to tell our story. We can't have the whole desert, we can only have a piece of it. The desert is a strange and wonderful place. The wind blows over the desert, it's never the same. At day, in the daytime it's very, very hot and dry. There's no water in the desert. And at night it's very, very cold. People don't go into the desert unless they have to. But today's story is about somebody who did. So let's get our story on the, on the desert bag. After the flood, the animals came out of the ark, and so did Noah and his family. And the animals went to the four corners of the world and repopulated the world. As more and more people came into, into being, they tended to cluster along rivers like the river Euphrates here, at places like Ur here and Haran over here. They liked to be near the water because their, their animals could, could drink and the water was, was good for the crops to help them to grow. And people believed that there were gods everywhere. Gods in the trees, gods in the water, gods in the animals. They believed that there were gods everywhere, in the sky, the sun, the moon. But some people believed that God was everywhere. One God was everywhere, not many gods. Two of those people there was a man called Abraham and his wife called Sarah. Abraham would come close to God and God would come close to him. And one day God said to Abraham, I want you to go and take Sarah, your wife, and all your animals and your people and go to live at Haran. So Abraham did as God wanted. They packed their things got their animals and all their people and they set off through the desert following the river and eventually they came to Haran and they settled there. And Abraham would go out into the desert at night and look at the stars and God would be close to him and he would be close to God. And God said, I want you to leave Haran and go to, towards Canaan, to a place I will show you. And so Abraham did as he was told. He took Sarah, his wife, and his sheep, and his donkeys, and all his people, and he set off. And as he did, he wondered if God would be there. Well, first of all, they stopped at a place called Sheshem. And Abraham discovered that God was there. And so he took some stones and he built an altar and worshipped God at Sheshem. And then they walked on through the desert, away from the river, into the wilderness, and they came to a place called Bethel. And they found that God was there as well, so they built an altar and worshipped God at Bethel. Finally they came to a place called Hebron and they settled in Hebron and found that God was there as well so they built an altar at Hebron as well and worshipped God. One night God called Abraham into the desert 
and said, look up at the stars in the sky. I am going to make you the father of many people. You and, and Sarah, your wife, will have a child, a son. And eventually you will have more descendants than there are stars in the sky or grains of sand in the desert. And Abraham thought, that can't be true. I'm old and so is Sarai my wife. We can't have a son. But God had promised him a son. And God, had, as, a, as an earnest of that promise, he changed their names. And Abraham became Abraham and Sarai became Sarah. And they lived at Hebron for many years. I wonder what you liked best about that story. I know that some of you would love to be here and run your fingers through the sand. But it's so much more than the sand this story. It's about listening to God and doing what God wants us to do. Let's light our candle. Candle reminds us that Jesus is with us here, and as we pray, he will be listening to us. We can't pass the crosses round, of course, but we can pray. Perhaps you've made a cross at home, and you can hold it as we pray. And there are so many things to pray for, so many people who need our prayers. All those people who are finding life very, very difficult at the moment. All those children who can't go to school and miss the fun and the excitement of being together. All the people in hospital and all the doctors and nurses and cleaners and cooks and porters and all those people who work in hospitals and care. We pray for them all, but particularly for those who are poor or anxious or worried. Worried about what the future holds. Be with all these people, we pray. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, now we're going to put the candle out. It's a shame, but we have to do it. The candles remind us that, with, that Jesus is with us here in this place. We're going to put the candle out to remind us that Jesus can be where you are as well, in your home, wherever you do, whatever you do, wherever you go. Jesus is with you. Well, I look forward to our, the second part of our story when we find out if God's promise to Abraham and Sarah came true, and if they did have a son, and what happened then. So let's bless all our children and our families. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you, and may the light of his countenance shine upon you, and give you peace, now and always.